Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends, today's an exciting day because the Spiel des Jahres nominees came out. Uh, this is essentially the game of the year in Germany. It's the most prestigious award, arguably, in board game. Uh, and there's, I'm gonna cover the two main sets of awards. The normal Spiel des Jahres, which is sort of like the very family-ish game. I'm gonna go over the three games that are on that, give you a quick overview of what they are, my thoughts on those, the ones that I've played, and then predictions. And then we're gonna go to the Kenner Spiel, which is the, the little heavier games. Used to be connoisseur games, but no longer. They're getting lighter now. They're just you know a little heavier than the family games. I'm gonna also tell you about the three nominees there. Go ahead and talk about the ones I played. I played them, uh, and I'm gonna give you what I think, and then give you my predictions for that as well, and then some commentary as well as about the award in general. So here we go. All right, so the Spiel des Jahres in no particular order. The first one I'm gonna talk about is In the Footsteps of Darwin. Now, in this game, you are junior naturalists who have arrived aboard the Beagle to help Charles Darwin finish his book on the origin of species. Now, during this journey, you will study animals. You're gonna be carrying out uh, different surveys of the land. You're gonna be publishing your findings and developing theories. Now, so essentially in this game, you're going to be selecting tiles based on either animal type or location and you're gonna be putting it in your grid. And you get this sort of abstract nature of moving the beagle around depending on which animal you selected. You're gonna be getting different guides. They're gonna give you special powers. Uh, you're going to be trying to finish rows or columns of, with different tiles in your own little tableau there. Uh, you're gonna be trying to, you're gonna be getting bonuses from that. You're gonna be covering tiles uh, to possibly change the bonuses or get better points, but you're also gonna be getting theories which are going to give you end game goals. Now I have played In the Footsteps of Darwin. I haven't done a full review on it. Uh, for me, this game was pleasant. It was a light family game that the, the artwork was nice. Uh, I, I enjoyed the play. It was fine for me. It was one that was like, hey, it's a nice light game. You can, you can and, and I do cover quite a bit of family lighter games on my channel. Uh, and this one I liked, I enjoyed it. It was fine for me. Uh, there's just enough going on to make it interesting when you're playing with family. Uh, this isn't obviously one you'd pull out with gamers, but for me, it was nice. It was fine. Uh, it wasn't, I know it also won the Mensa Select Award here in North America, which is a pretty big prestigious award as well. Uh, and I know that a lot of people love this game. For me, I thought the game was fine. It's, you know, it's a solid six for me. It didn't stand out as some of the other sort of games like Cascadia and such that have won this award earlier. For me, this game was a good family game, a solid game, but I didn't feel like it was one that was that really stood out from the others. Now, Sky Team is a cooperative game. Now, it's only for two players. Now, in this, you're going to be playing both a pilot and a co-pilot, and you're going to be at the controls of an airliner. Now, your goal is to work together as a team to land your airplane in different airports around the world. And to land your plane, you need to be silently planning and assigning your dice to the correct space at the right time in your cockpit to balance the axis of your plane, control its speed, uh, and deploy the flaps, extend the landing gear, and you're going to contact the control tower to clear your path from other planes. Uh, and you're even going to have a little bit of coffee to improve your <laughs> concentration enough to change the value of your die. Now, I played uh, Sky Team way before it came out, back at the Gamma Trade Show of 2023, and I was initially impressed by the game, but it was very easy. I had won it on my first try. And then once I finally got my review copy in, by the way, I've reviewed this game. You can, you can uh, check my channel for that review if you wanna see more about the game. But after you're done with the basic game, there are a ton of scenarios after that. And that really opens up the floodgates for this game because they're going to add new mechanisms, new goals, new challenges, new things. And they ramp from easier to medium to difficult to the point where I think there's like 18 of them somewhere around there where the game has a lot of replayability for that. And it's uh, it's there, there's there's a lot you can do after the first game. So this was definitely an interesting sort of two player limited communication co-op game. Now, Captain Flip is a game of obvious simplicity, and it's explained in less time than a cannonball shot. On your turn, you draw a tile from the bag, you like it, you keep it. You don't like it, you flip it. Then you place it on your board to form your crew using one of nine characters or four boards with different tactics. Now, this is the only game at the time of recording this video that I have not yet played. In fact, it was one that uh, wasn't even on my radar yet, so I can't speak to 
the specifics of this, but I am going to discuss it a little bit uh, here as we start to talk more about the commentary and my predictions. So I want to start off by uh, talking about some commentary here. Um, you know, the Spiel des Jahres Award has been one that I've loved for a long time. And over the last handful of years, it's been getting harder and harder to predict. There's been less, uh, there's been less consistency in the award. And for me, this is a problem because as a, as a reviewer, I'm always trying to figure out which ones are going to be in these slots. And now they've sort of blended the lines between their Spiel des Jahres and their Kenner Spiel des Jahres. Where one, when it first came out, I think of 2011 was the first year, I think Dominion won the first year. It was really made to say, hey, this is a gamer's game and the other ones are our light family games. And over the last few years, they've made it a lot harder where certain games could be in either one of these. And it feels like they're just finding the games they really like and then just throwing them in a category that maybe it's not even the best category that it's in. Like last year, they had, I mean, come on, now. last year they had Challengers. And Challengers had a weight on Board Game Geek of 1.78, and it won the Kenner Spiel. What? It won the, I was mad that it even was nominated for that. I thought Challengers was gonna win the normal Spiel des Jahres. It did not. It won the Kenner Spiel des Jahres. And the fact that it even was on there at a weight of 1.78 was crazy. They were now saying, hey, guess what? We know the Spiel des Jahres is getting lighter and lighter. They were putting games that would basically float away on this thing. So they're starting to put even light games on the Kenner Spiel, and now they're winning them. But now this year, we get Sky Team. Sky Team is actually heavier, 2.02, than, than Challengers was, 1.78. So uh, I don't get it. Sky, so based upon what they just did last year, Sky Team should be a, a, a Kenner Spiel. And in fact, if I were picking these games beforehand and I had thought Sky Team was a popular game, if I thought it was gonna be somewhere in one of these awards, I would've said, well, absolutely. Especially, you know, in past years, I probably still would've put it in Kenner Spiel. But basically, yes, especially because Challengers won last year. Uh, this is definitely not lighter than Challengers, so it's gonna be a, a Kenner Spiel. Now, no, now it's on the Spiel des Jahres. And it's really been frustrating, I think, to watch these games come up and watch the jury put some games on some lists, some games on other lists, make you head scratch. Now we have no idea. Now it feels like they're just taking games and games that they like and they're trying to shoehorn them into one of the nominees. Oh, you know what? We really think this one's a nominee. Well, it really should be a Kenish Spiel. Yeah, who cares? Let's just throw it on the Spiel des Jahres list because uh, it's our highest rated one from the jury. And I feel like they're like shoehorning games in because it's their favorite games and not drawing a nice hard line between the two of them. And it's making it very frustrating for, I would imagine, normal game players, but it's definitely doing it for media content creators like myself. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the three games here. We've got Dar In the Footsteps of Darwin. For me, it was a fine game, it was okay. Uh, we had Sky Team and we had Captain Flip, which by far is the lightest game. I mean, that thing is like a 1.12. It's gonna float away, for example. Uh, now, the last two years, the heaviest game of the three in the Spiel of the One, so Dwarf Romantic and Cascadia. Now, granted, those aren't heavy games, but the heaviest ones have won. But the lightest one has won in recent years as well, like Micro Macro Crime City and Pictures. So I can't really point to those and say, eh, because of the weights of these games, one of them is going to win and one of them is not. Personally speaking, uh, I think Sky Team is the best game here. Now, granted, I have not played Captain Flip yet hopefully i will soon uh but sky team is a very popular game and it's it's a really good game i think sky team is the best game here again i don't think it should be on this list it should be on the kenish Spiel list but i feel like it's the best game however i don't think it's going to be the one that's going to win i think the one that's going to win is going to be in the foot of Dar in the footsteps of darwin here's why Sky Team, the Spiel des Jahres tends to be a more family-oriented game. It's been going lighter and lighter, it's been doing lots of family and party games, and they like to do, put games in there that have experiences for the whole family. Sky Team is a two-player game only, and it's a crunchy game. Like, it's, it's a 2.02, but there's a decent amount of rules up front. There's a decent amount of stuff to grok. Again, I'm surprised it's on this list, but I don't think that's the style of game that we have been seeing win the Spiel des Jahres. It's been lighter games. It's been, even on the heavier side of things, it's been like Cascadia. Because Darwin plays up to five players, two to five players, and the art is nice and it looked really, really nice, and the game is good, I have a feeling that Darwin, in the footsteps of Darwin, is going to win. So my prediction is in the footsteps of Darwin. My favorite here is Sky Team, but of course, I don't even think it should be on this list for all the reasons I just mentioned. 
Now, they also recommended six games. Usually, they recommend five or so. And interestingly enough, a couple I wanted to comment on there, Harmonies, which was a game I recently reviewed. It's flying up the Board Game Geek charts. I thought was fine. But I didn't think it was quite nearly as good as other games that do certain things like that. Check out my full review for that. Phantom Inc. is a game that was out in North America long ago. And it's an amazing game. Uh, but it just recently got released in Germany. I love this game. I wish this one, out of all the games that were on the list that I already just mentioned and talked about for the Spiel des Jahres, this one easily should have been on this list. The last one, Trekking Through History. I am pretty disappointed that this one did not make the list. This is a fantastic, super streamlined game. It's light, the art's amazing. It just, it's, there's no fat in this game. It's smooth, it's, it, it flows so smooth. It's got great decisions, yet it's so approachable. This is the type of game that should not only be nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, but should be winning the Spiel des Jahres. Not saying, oh, it's a great two-player niche game that's too heavy for the Spiel des Jahres. Not one that's like, ah, it's a good light game, but it's okay. Phantom Inc. and Trekking Through History should be two of the three nominees this year, for sure, and they only made the recommended list. I'm not happy about that. So if it was my choice, I'd be putting Trekking Through History as the Spiel des Jahres winner and nominee, and Phantom Inc. being right there, too. It's a little thinky uh, for some. I think that's why it might not have won, but again, they're only recommended. That's just my wish list. So now let's move on to the Kenner Spiel. In no particular order, the first one I'm going to talk about is Daybreak. Now, this is a cooperative game designed by Matt Leacock. Hello, the one that did Pandemic. Uh, now, this is about climate uh, change and, you know, climate action, I guess I should say. Each player controls a world power, and you're deploying policies and technologies to both, both dismantle a, uh, the engine of global heating and to build resilient societies that protect people from the life-threatening crisis. Now, if the global temperature gets too high, or if too many people from any world power are in crisis, then everyone loses. But if you work together to be able to draw down global emissions to net zero, you're all win. Now, in this game, it's interesting because you're sort of working together on global project cards, uh, but there's a lot of sort of crisis cards you'll deal with. Some of them you'll be able to see, most of them are unknown crises. Um, and in this game, I like the co-op aspect that, that you're working together and you're, you're, you're talking about things and you have a hand of cards. There's some stuff that, that's, that not everybody sees. And I, I love the theme. I love the artwork. I love the idea of the game. But for me, this game fell a little flat because of a few things. One, those unknown crisis cards that would come up, these are going to get flipped up. You have no idea what you're going to face. And so for the whole round, sure, you can try to plan and do a good project. You can plan for the known crisis, but most of the time, the ones that are going to be flipped, you're not going to see those. So you have no idea what you're dealing with. And they're brutal when you get hit by those. And it's like, that felt very random. And then the game had a lot of interesting combos, like comboing cards together, like Race for the Galaxy, where you're taking much stronger actions if you can combo cards together for certain actions. But the game's difficulty spanned more from easy to hard based upon the card draws you got through the game and which cards you did get versus which ones you didn't get versus the actual, you know, hey, play this on easy, play this on hard type of thing. So for me, the game's two big random elements, and this game was very important as like the randomization of cards and which ones you would wait for, which ones you could really need. The card draws and the unknown crisis made this game one that I didn't really love. The next one is the Guild of Merchant Explorers. This came out many years ago here in North America. This game has simultaneous play where you're going to be exploring different maps. Now, you're going to be following explore cards and explorers. You're going to be placing them on your map, but they're going to have to be adjacent to either villages, the capital space, or already previously placed explorers. Now, this aspect was similar to a Rhino Knizia game I loved, like Blue Lagoon, where you're building networks across, you're building adjacent, but then at the end of an era, you have to basically take all those explorers off and then you're starting only from specific areas. You're also trying to gain treasures at ruins, which are gonna give you different abilities and end game goals. But the best part here of this game is at the end of the era, you pull most of your stuff off and you're left with, again, starting from villages, trading posts, you know, things like that. And certain things are left and certain things aren't. So you're sort of like building this network, you're trying to establish these things that you can start from. If you don't get there, oh, all those guys are coming back, right? And then you gotta start again. And so this had that interesting aspect, of it's very, it's pretty light, uh, but I could see that, yeah, I guess it could be, it's too heavy for a spill of I'd say, even though it's pretty light. Uh, but I enjoyed the game, it was fine. A lot of people loved this more than others. I forget which content creator, but he's a friend of mine, I can't remember which one it was, it was like his game of the year this year. So this game got a lot of love out in the world, 
I thought it was fine. Again, it was like a solid six for me. Not one that I really loved. Now the next one here is Ticket to Ride Legacy. Now this is was a legacy version of Ticket to Ride, right? So it's, you're gonna be playing it over multiple games. The games start really easy, almost like as if you're playing the little mini box, little 20 minute Ticket to Rides, where you only have a few trains and you only have a little bit of a map. And over the course of the game, you're going to be, uh, games, you're going to be getting different abilities. You're gonna be getting some end game gold cards. You're gonna be getting some cards that you're trying to work on this game or next game. You're gonna be, as you can imagine, a legacy game. You're gonna be stickering things and changing the board and having all different roles come out. And you're gonna be ex exploring different parts of the map. I mean, essentially it's, it's, it's Ticket to Ride on steroids, but it does start easy. And this game was amazing. This is my favorite legacy game. I reviewed it. If you wanna check my review, you can see the, the aspect that my, uh, my, my full review there. Uh, but Ticket to Ride Legacy uh, for me was an absolute 10. It was an amazing. I hope they make another one of this. Uh, just the different little mini games that came up. I mean, it started as a lighter ticket to ride than the standard game, but ended heavier than the heaviest expansion because you've got a lot of things you're sort of keeping track of. So it allows you to sort of ease your way into the different rule sets where you get new ones sort of like, you know, after each game, starting after the third one, really. And you're starting to get, kind of get more rules and more rules and more rules and more rules to the point where you have like a medium weight game by the end of it. Uh, and you can also actually really play your map afterwards. Uh, and you could actually really play it. Unlike some legacy games that say you could play it, but you could never really play it with a new player because there's too many rules. This one you can as a good way to play it afterwards. So Ticket to Ride Legacy, I loved. Now as for commentary for this uh, set of games here, um, you know, Daybreak itself, it's, it's the heaviest of the three. Uh, it's a 2.89 rating. And since 2011, which is the year that the, the, the Kenner's Reel started, only one game that was significantly heavier than any of the other ones in there and was the heaviest one, and that was Village back in 2012, and that was a 3.07. Uh, that is, you know, so the heaviest game typically does not win this. Plus, I don't quite think that Daybreak was good enough to win this award, so I don't think it's going to win this award. The Guild of Merchant Explorers uh, is the lightest of them, and again, I, I, as I liked it, I just... It didn't really stand out for me. For this, for me, Ticket to Ride, uh, which is at a weight of 2.52. And by the way, that weight must be like at the end of, of the last one when there's the most rules because it's still pretty light when you first start. There's no way that this game is a 2.52 on day one. The, at the very end, sure. Now, the reason why I think this is gonna win is A, the game's amazing. It's a, it's a 10. It's an unbelievable game. It's my favorite legacy game. The game just really stands out. It's very special. I hope they make another one of these. The other reason is, hey, having Ticket to Ride be one of the most popular games in the world, having the Spiel des Jahres have, Ticket to Ride have won that in 2004, having it sold, I don't know, 10, 15 million copies now, having Ticket to Ride Legacy win the like next step game award, which is the, basically the Kenner Spiel, is just kind of a no-brainer, right? The people in, that have just played Ticket to Ride around the world, especially in Germany, they're familiar with Ticket to Ride, obviously, by now. Uh, they're gonna see, oh, hey, there's this next step game that's Ticket to Ride Legacy. It won the award, let's try it, right? This, I think this is just such a no-brainer because it is the best, one of the best games that came out, actually, it was my game of the year last year. Um, for me, it was game of the year and it's Ticket to Ride and it's a little bit heavier, so it's like winning the correct award, in my opinion, here. I think this is hands down the easiest slam dunk ever for the, the Kenner Spiel. The other two, one I didn't really, it was okay. The other one was eh, fine. This one was game of the year, and it's from Ticket on the same legacy, uh, t Ticket to Ride sort of uh, franchise. I think this is a no-brainer, hands down. I will, I will be shocked, 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 shocked to the gills if this does not win, because in my opinion, this is the easiest Kenner Spiel ever to predict. If I'm wrong, wow, I'm gonna be really wrong, but there's no way this is gonna happen. Ticket to Ride Legacy has got to win this one. Now onto the recommended, they did recommend four games. Uh, I was only really familiar with one of them, Forest Shuffle, which by the way, is a fantastic game. In my opinion, is the right weight of game to put on the Kenner Spiel. Uh, and by the way, in my opinion, it is way better than Daybreak and the Guild of Merchants and Explorers. So I was actually surprised that Far Shuffle did not make the list. I thought for sure after I played that game, I did. I've reviewed that. You can go on my channel and watch the review for Far Shuffle. That game is unbelievable tableau builder. That, oh my gosh, it, it is so, so good. Um, 
oh man, I feel I, I always say that like that game was 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 the game that uh, Meadow wanted to be. It's like great natured, tr- uh, you know, uh, tableau building, but faster, more streamlined. All the fat cut off. It's just so pure. So for a shuffle, ugh, I'm a little surprised it's not on the three recommend uh, the three Kenner spiels. But even if it was. Still, Ticket to Ride Legacy, I think, would have won. Well, I hope this brought to your attention that the awards have been nominated. Usually in previous years, it's uh, it's in May. So this, this time it's been a little later than normal. I'm not sure why. Uh, but I hope this allowed you to see that, hey, the awards are out, the nominees are out. Now you can go off and start playing these games, making your own decisions. Hopefully you've learned a little about these, looked ones you think you might like. Uh, and which ones do you think you're going to win? What do you think about the choices that were here of the recommended versus the, the ones that were there? Which ones do you think were left off? Which ones do you think are going to win? Let me know in the comments. Let's have that discussion down there. This is the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, and helping you on the next one you love. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and they'll be launching the 4.5 Kickstarter this July, which will introduce the new Galactic Minecraft Game Topper, as well as new miniature game terrain packs, leg kit options, dining covers, accessories, and amazing package deals. Game Toppers will be at the Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, June 19th to 23rd at booth C2119, where some of these new items will be demoed, so stop by there or check them out at GameToppersLLC.com.